And our final speaker is Dr. Lockie Law from HKU. Hello, everybody. Are you able to see me? Uh, okay, because, yeah, I'm trying something new. I, I'm not sure if it's going to work. If it, if it doesn't, then it's, it's going to be terrible. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to do go full screen here. Uh, I, I hope everybody can see my face. It's uh, not very well lit. <laughs> okay, uh, what's left for me to talk about now? <laughs> so, uh, all the talks have been fantastic and, and so informative. So on my end, I keep making changes. So I, I hear the previous week, oh, he's talked about it, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep editing. But, but thanks for the organizers for organizing this amazing, amazing thing. Right. Um, uh, my topic or my title for this presentation or talk is uh, Gen AI Assisted Reading, Note Taking, and Text Analysis. Uh, uh, just give you a bit of context. I have a, I have a bachelor degree in computer science, and I couldn't find a job at that time. And so I move on to linguistics and teaching, and that's why I'm here. I never thought about uh, being able to use my knowledge in computer science again until you know Gen AI came out, which is which is really really uh, cool. Right. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to show you. An activity that I have, um, or a class that I have taught using Gen AI uh, to assist students reading. The students are graduate school students, so masters, PhD students, um, and I I wanted to approach this academic reading um, topic because amount all the four skills, right? Reading, writing, listening, speaking. Reading, it seems to be the one that nobody really wants to, to talk about or nobody really cares about, right? Um, but then for graduate students, um, they have to write their thesis, dissertation, they have to you know, think about publication. So reading for them, it's, it can be very, very important. And I thought, well, that's a, that's a great start. Let's, 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 let's do that. Um, so I start the lesson by asking them, like, um, so, you know, students, how do you normally compile your data for literature review? And the way that's uh, basically how do you organize your, your literature? Because you have to read so many, right? 10, 20, 40, 100, and you want to gather the information. So how do you normally do it? Uh, so I ask them the questions, and then, and before I show this slide, obviously, uh, and then they talk about it, great, or I, did, I tried this, I tried this, and then I said, oh, maybe do, do you put things in the, in the Excel sheets? And then some of them said, yeah, I do that in Excel sheets. And then I said, well, that's great, because, uh, oh, here's the slide. I also, I also do something similar, right? When I, when I do reading, um, I like to put things in the, in the Excel sheet and uh, just collect these data and stuff. But then after a while, I thought, like, wow, that's still not you know, very productive, right? It's still pretty slow. It's more well organized, but uh, not optimum yet. So that brings me to the point about using AI for help. But before we get into the AI part, is you know, I always have to emphasize this: everything you submit to a Gen AI, you are giving it away. And then after that, I will um, you know start uh, telling them, okay, if you haven't got a POE account, you can you know register a POE account, but don't use your 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 current email you know create a new email account before you do this and then you know just be just be safe and then i go through about how to uh, choose a appropriate gen ai account um then you know, think about uploading a paper that's that's the key to this and then think about a prompt uh but before we go on to the details more prompting questions more questions for them to reflect as in like for example as you can see here how do you choose the gen ai program or which gen ai program best suits your questions the question types and tokens everything counts uh what is um what is every gen ai program capable of you know the different ais are good at something so you have to you have to know them you have to, you have to pick the right one uh and then for well, going to number two let's say uh then is it safe and ethical to upload a, of a paper or something to a gen ai program because basically you are going to give it away right uh, how many attachments can this uh, Gen AI accept each time? Because are you going to upload 10 altogether or one by one? Uh, what document format? Finally, is to think of a prompt. So prompt engineering, uh, of course, a lot of trial and error, and but that goes by experience as well. So do I actually know what I really want from the output? And uh, how can I tell the Gen AI what I want? I mean, this seems very simple, but up to a lot of people, when you're talking to a computer program, it's not that easy because you normally skip a lot of you know, background information and context, and you have to put all those contexts in. So these are the seven sample questions. I'm not going to go through uh, all of them, but um, I guess you, you get the idea. After that, then it's uh, 
starting to collect the data for literature review. Uh, I do this on a 30 minute activity. I have the, some of the papers like titled here, but I, I, I didn't say you have to use them. I just basically use them as an example. I say, okay, go to, go back to your discipline because all the students are from different disciplines, go to disciplines and, you know, pick, pick out some papers that you, you think it's okay to upload, um, that, that, uh, you want to learn more about it. And then, so try to do this with whatever you have, right? What, uh, what, whatever knowledge you have about AI, try to, try to put these, um, fill in the boxes basically for these tables, right? And so they, they worked about 30 minutes and oh, during that time, we look at it and see how they progress. Um, and then, and then finally, well, um, are the Gen AI's results accurate? Always have to get them to think about, uh, are they just making it up? Are they hallucinated? If they are, what do you do? If they are not, how do you know that? How do you check these results quicker? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that's the, you know, that's the getting the students to do the, to the thinking or to the activity. But um, I want to show you some of the, you know, afterwards, right? We, we go through a discussion and then I show them some tips of how I do things. Um, I use BOE, like I said here. Uh, so I, I hope you can see this. I hope you can see this. Okay. Uh, so context-wise, say I, I, I put, the, put down this prompt, give them, give the, um, I, what's this one? This is Claw. This is Claw Instant 100K. So I said, well, you need to read several journal articles before the next class. Okay, so please extract the relevant information from the attachments. Uh, if page numbers are found, provide that for me as well. Put them into a table. Uh, suggest appropriate column headings because at this point, I, I like I don't know what headings I want. So I'm just going to give them a first paper and then remember these tables and all the values so that I can reuse it for subsequent uploads. Okay, so with that, I uploaded my own paper there uh, as a demonstration because I don't mind my paper being being used by AI. And that this is what Claude provided. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, like the, you know, some AI programs can actually generate tables already. Uh, and if I look at it, it's quite accurate, you know, but then it only suggested like five columns and that, that last part is a bit long. So then I, you know, Hey, great. That's a good start. You know, <laughs> nice. Uh, now you have decided to, um, construct a table because you have more ideas. You, you want, you want the following headings. Okay. You want the following headings like that. And then you want to extract the relevant information, information again with page number, if appropriate, and put them into the this table. Remember the value this table that you have previously uh, generated and reuse it for subsequent uploads. So just repeating some of the prompts. And this is uh, the the new one. Okay, it's a new one, and uh, it's a bit long, so I'm just going to scroll it over pretty quickly. Okay, so we've got something now. That's great. That's like the first paper. So, and and if the prompt works, I don't then just say, oh, please add another row to this uh, current table using information from the attachment. And so I uploaded my second paper here again, uh, because I don't mind. And we got the second one. Okay. In the second row. Right. So with this approach, basically it's not going to write the literature review for the students. It's, uh, but it's a great way to organize their, their data. It's a quick pre-reading as, as they, as I call it, it's a great pre-reading. And they can be more targeted to 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 locate these uh, informations if they need to. So if they have to do like ten readings before the lesson, I mean, this will be great summary. Uh, for if the page numbers are provided, and in this case uh, it's got some, it's not doing very well, but it's got some there. So it will um, you know help them read more efficiently in this sense. So it's great. Uh, it's, a, it's a different way of note taking, so to speak. And then let's go to look at another thing about reading again, because I'm a language teacher. So, uh, here, sometimes I also have these, uh, problems when I am reading journal articles, uh, for example, I, I was reading something like this, talking about eco terrorism, because uh, my interest is in the eco linguistics recently. And I, I come across this, this paragraph and I was like, ah, wow. Okay. I seem to know what it means, but I also, at the same time, I'm not sure what it means. So I go, okay, I, I, I can say, well, what does it mean by symbolic nature here in a way that we are getting engaging, uh, we're engaging with the paper itself. Uh, this is just the normal POE assistance. So that is chat GPT 3.5. The, the good thing about this is that, um, given that little quote with the context there, it's able to give us, or give me in that sense, um, what it's actually talking about. So in, in a way it's actually unpacking these abstract terminologies and expressions and, um, more of like a, towards like a tutoring, um, kind of, kind of feedback, if you like, right. So, because then you don't have a tutor here, you don't have a professor here. No one is reading your paper 
and and voila, you know, you've got some some quick help here. And I was as I was reading this, this is really nice in a sense. It's really technical. Uh, it's, it's still technical. It's still formal uh, in the in terms of language, but it really breaks it down uh, with it with with good with good descriptions here. Talking about what symbolic nature is actually referring to within the definition of equal terrorism. And then I go I go I go I go further and say, okay, well, can you uh, can you maybe suggest like one term to describe this or you know, in a more concise way? And of course, that gives me like okay, maybe representational. It doesn't just give you the word; it also explains to you how that actually matches uh, the definitions or that, that I, I have provided. And uh, but this is like an adjective, so I I go like okay, how about give me a noun then? Then just give me okay, we can call that a symbolism, for example. And that's really, really helpful to 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 anybody, I guess. I mean, it's helpful to me. I, I suppose that's going to be very helpful to students. This is another example of how how, how it actually unpacks abstract sentences. Um, here, I specifically go and ask, like, can you unpack this and make it easier for me to understand? Again, I took I, I saw this in in a, in a paper that I'm reading. That's an, an abstract. So it goes like, while fantasy and enjoyment gratifications were possibly associated with pros pro pro animal attitudes, blah, 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 and you said it's very very complex. And then, uh, so asking the, the AI to unpack for me, it gives me very, very easy reads. So it gives me the key points. What are the key points? And, and then, then, you know, tell me what that means, right? Uh, and I found that, like, really, really helpful, honestly speaking. It's, like, really, really good. Um, and they give you a, a quick summary as well. In other words, suggest people's motivation, satisfaction, the realm of fantasy, enjoyment, and it's just, just, just wonderful. Um, let's see here. I think this is a bit long, so yeah, maybe I'm not going to go to this one. Okay, uh, let's talk about three. Okay, um, so in this situation, it's like I have already written something from what I've read, um, but I'm not sure because I'm not I'm not I'm not a philosophy major student. Uh, I need to use some ideologies and terminologies like that. I'm not familiar with it, so I said, well, I've written something like this. Um, I, you know, I, I was said I created a table here, but the create table didn't display. Anyway, it's good. I mean, it's still be it's still able to read it. Um, and I want to know what are the ideologies that has been promoted by by these uh, by these header columns. And then so I just copy and paste what I've written, and then it analyzes for me in the sense that it breaks down the sentences and then say and then tell me, well, uh, I, I'm able to I am able to read your table. And it turns out that it's something about environmentalism and uh, utilitarianism and give you, you know, the terminologies that I needed. Again, because I'm not from this field, right? Um, and uh, sometimes I can go further and I ask, um, say, okay, I, I want to know a term um, in, in language and linguistics, but I don't know this term. So, um, so what's the term for the word that, uh, for the words with a certain connotation and it allows me to to have the term give me explanations and everything so really really helpful kind of tutoring style of reading um locating answers okay um this is like again more in-depth engaging with a particular paper yeah okay did this journal article in the attachment utilizes any linguistic approach um so i'm not going to bored you because <laughs> i'm a linguistics major uh, you know main here but uh, basically, if you want to ask something very specific and you give them the paper there, it can act like they are like the Jenny I is the author. So be able to analyze it for you, unpack it for you, and you can you can consult. So are, are there any use of multimodal analysis in here? And tell you yes, and give you evidence on that. Okay. Um, you can also ask for summaries of this paper. Okay, this is also another thing that's really good to do. Um, I see, okay, I have only one minute more. Okay, so yeah, this number five is the same. Basically, you are just a prompt that says uh, you upload a paper, and then it says, "Oh, can you tell me the difference between two concepts uh, in in terms of the author's view?" And it'll be able to analyze it for you on behalf of the of the author because now you're giving the entire paper, right? So that is very very efficient, and uh, you know you, you cannot talk to directly talk to the view talk, talk to the um, the author. So this is like a great way. Okay, finally, um, so. Uh, say now you want to really, really just map out the whole paper, one paper itself. So you know there's going to be introduction, you know there's going to be literature review, methodology, and all that. So this is, again, this is my paper, a co-author paper. Okay, and I asked the, the, the uh, AI you know, to map it out for me. Okay, great. After that, I said, well, uh, okay, now can you, can you give me more detail? So more detail in point forms. And after that, it's, um, okay, now I would like to make it markdown compatible. 
so that I can uh, you can you can show me the results in code block. Okay, so then we're getting the coding. So we have given all the codes, right? What I can do now here as I go to mark, uh, mark map, you can try it out, and then I just copy and paste my entire thing here, and as you can see, basically it turns my entire paper into a mind map. And it's very it's interactive mind map. So it's a great summary for anyone who's into, who's into reading or, or more well organization note taking. But I guess okay, that's all the time I have. Um, yeah, just, I don't have time to show you this one. Anyway, let's see if uh, I can show you later. But thanks, thank you. That's all I have. Thanks thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lockie. Uh, th th there's a couple of uh, uh, questions uh, that are addressed to you in the QA as well. Uh, so feel free to look at them and, and address.